Good evening and welcome to Wednesday evening prayer. And what a lovely day it's been today and I hope you've had a good day too. This evening I want to dedicate evening prayer for something that's weighing heavy on my heart. And it's to do with this wall that President Obama, not Obama, President Trump is hoping to build separating Mexico from America. I, I just feel the whole thing is immoral and evil because it's going to separate families uh, who are living in that part of America and Mexico on the border. And I don't think it achieves anything. The Berlin Wall didn't. And the war between Israel and Palestine is, is just the face of evil. So I pray this evening from my heart that the Senate will overrule Donald Trump in this. I know it will bring a lot of work to the American building trade, but I just pray it doesn't happen. Enough of the speech. Here we go. We light this light in thanksgiving to a loving God who doesn't place boundaries or brick walls before us, but whose spirit and whose love knocks each brick down, especially around our hearts, that allow us to breathe again and to breathe the very breath of God, not a breath of fear, but a breath of love. So let us just be still for a moment and bring the whole family of God, all faiths, faiths all colours, creeds, lifestyle choices, gender orientation, and those who have lost their faith through bullying and abuse, coercion and manipulation. And we pray this evening that each one of us will take up the gauntlet and become ambassadors of peace in our daily lives through prayer and a smile. So right, we begin with our prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai as we pray together. And I see that our dear sister Jane has joined us with brother Liam. Welcome. So we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother, God, the earthly Mother and all the great Masters, and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Wednesday evening, we commune with the angel of love, saying, angel of love, descend upon my feeling body, and purify all my feelings. While this is being recited, the feeling body both sends and attracts superior currents of feeling energy to and from all beings on earth and all those in the cosmic ocean of love. And we pray that the angel of love will surround this potential wall to be built between America and Mexico and that it won't take place. So right, my frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. Verse 15 from Psalm 139. So let us be still and be aware of God's presence within and all around. And our opening prayer and thanksgiving, you are the love of every living creature, O God. You are the warmth of the rising sun. You are the whiteness of the moon at night. You are the life of the growing earth. You are the strength of the waves of the sea. Speak to each one of us this night, O God. Speak to us your truth. Dwell with us this night, O God, and dwell with each one of us in your love. Amen. So now, my dear friends, we continue with the lovely prayers for peace. 
and we're on this beautiful section, love and acceptance. Oh no, we did that this morning, forgive me. Understanding and insight. And we come to Psalm 119, verse 114. Give me understanding that I might live. And from the Sikh community we read, the essence of religion is the Lord's name alone. It abides in the minds of the devotees of God. Millions of sins are erased in the company of the holy. And by the grace of the saint, one escapes the messenger of death. And our Christian one, ah, oh, first time ever, St. Francis of Assisi, how wonderful. We pray for wisdom regarding the nature of human violence. We pray for an understanding of our own limitations. We pray for discernment to choose the path that leads to peace. We pray for awareness of the violence that can lie hidden in our own well-behaved hearts. And we pray for a vision of peace to inspire hearts to change their minds. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. And may I seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. In thy blessed Son, Jesus, the cosmic Christ, our Lord and Saviour, St. Francis of Assisi. Good on you. And from the ba Brahma Kumaras we read, appreciative of the richness that different opinions and perspectives bring to the tapestry of life, a tolerant person is able to remain calm and contented. And when true spiritual love reigns, tolerance has no limits. Oh yes, I do like that. And now we come, ah, here we are. I was guided to read from the New Celtic Monasticism for Everyday People by Ray Simpson. It's a beautiful book. It's for the Pilgrim's Way. And this short section is on lifelong learning. Jesus calls us to be his disciples, which means that we are learners. We are called to learn every day of our lives. And when Jesus was asked which of God's commands was the greatest, he included in his reply that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with your soul and mind and your strength. This means that we are to learn by thinking, feeling and doing. Every human being is born to study. For God has given each of us an ability to feel, to discover, to ask, to listen, to think, and experiment. We do not have to be bookish to study. We learn in the way that best suits how God has made us. Bede records Aidan taught them many lessons about the conduct of their lives. But above all, he left them a most salutary example. All who accompanied him had to engage in some form of study. This was the daily task of Aidan and all who were with him. And Hilda's students, like Aidan's, learned in two ways, partly by study of books and partly by going out to serve the people in the streets. 
her most famous protege, Cadmon, or Cadmon, never learned to read, yet developed his talent for putting Bible stories into song. Wow. In recent centuries, Western nations lost the holistic way of learning which Jesus and the Celtic apostles practiced. The intellect was divorced from the other faculties. The experience of some chief of the Hopi Indian people of Arizona illustrates this. He studied in a U.S. institute for a time, and towards the end of his life he wrote, I had learned many English words and could recite part of the Ten Commandments. I knew how to sleep on a bed, pray to Jesus, comb my hair, eat with a knife and fork, and use a toilet. I had also learned that a person thinks with his head instead of his heart. Well put. And like the great teachers of the early church, we believe there is no separation in God between knowledge and commitment because God is love. Ultimately, we only know the truth by living it. We have to learn to think with our head through the heart. Children can teach us how to do this. Some school pupils visited an area where trees had been vandalized. They took photographs and accurately recorded what had happened to the trees. Then they were asked to listen to their feelings, to communicate these, and to reflect on what God might feel I think God feels gutted inside, like I do, said one boy. The way of life seeks to restore this approach to study, which links observation, data collection, intuition, thinking, and spirituality. It can be good to become expert in one subject, whether it be flower arranging, the night sky, or an aspect of the computer or technology to learn how such things work helps us to become observant, to distinguish between the shoddy and the good. And some examples of ways to study are, like me, I should have watched where I was going when I was locking the hens up and instead I went on all fours on my backside and I just laughed because I thought, hello, no point crying over spilled milk, it was just mud. So you see, we have to turn things round. Listening to the language of birds, music, nature and people. Well, the hens in the coop are having a good old giggle at me falling. Training classes from dog training to IT. Recording thoughts and visits on tape or video. Asking questions composing poems and songs, visiting a significant place, finding out about someone who inspires like Gandhi and Rumi, memorizing sayings, following conscience and reflecting on the results, reading and writing. No area of life should be excluded from study. It is all God's and it belongs to God. Not all study is good, however. We should avoid what is pointless, false, self-imposing, self-important or thoughtless. It is good for those of us who can read to always have something edifying to read, even when we are traveling or in a queue. Well, there's something to think about, especially about Aden one of Columbus' great um, disciples and monks whom he ordained as bishop and who went to Lindisfarne, my second spiritual home where I did quite a few videos uh, 10, 15, 10, 12 years ago and on Celtic spirituality and it was so beautiful to be there and I often longed to be there when the tide came in and I could stay the night but never happened. So let us come now to this place, this oasis of love. What is your heart saying to you? 
Where are you as a pilgrim on your journey? If you had a question to ask of God tonight, what would it be? What is it that you want of God right now? Is it clarity, strength? Now let us ask. Let us be still just for a moment and invite the cosmic Christ into our space and in the presence of the whole angelic realm and all the great spiritual teachers of all the great world's religions and the ancient ones and our forefathers. Let us invite them in to speak to us. Well, this evening when I began evening prayers, I had a little rant about Donald Trump wanting to build this wall separating the people of Mexico from America. And I thought, oh dear me, this is so negative and destructive. And, you know, we don't own this sacred earth to do things like that. We're custodians of the earth. So I pray that the ancient ones of those sacred lands, the indigenous peoples of Mexi Mexico and America, will prevent such a thing happening. And I pray that peace will prevail and that there will be alternative routes to choose other than building brick walls to keep God's children out. Because we all have a right of passage in this world as children of God. I prayed this evening too for what's been on the Radio 5 Live a lot today and that is a lot of our women MPs, how they're abused on social media, called the most awful and appalling names and some their life put in danger, like Joe Fox, Joe Cox. So we must pray this evening that people will take responsibility for their attitudes and actions using social media and not to decry other people or put them down as if there's something under their shoe. We pray for a return of empathy and compassion, respect. But there again, how can we respect another if we don't know how to respect ourselves? So we pray tonight for a reawakening a reawakening in this new year to seeing people as worthy, as worthy whether they're Asian, whether they're Islamic, whether they're Judaic or Christian, Druid, Wiccan, Pagan or what have you, that we try and see God in each one. So we pray for empathy. We pray for tolerance and respect. I pray for each one of you here, for Jane and for Brother Liam, for our dear Brother Brian, who's had a more upbeat day today and who sent me a beautiful picture that he took from his truck of the sun bursting through the clouds. What a beautiful picture. But I pray for all men and women of all faiths who've surrendered their heart to the light as ambassadors of peace, where they put their lives in danger to bring solace, to bring food and shelter, to bring medicines, to bring hope to the children of God and not, and not encourage them to stay in places of annihilation and victimization and for them not to keep on building brick walls around their life but to allow them receive some love and that's all we're called to give, to bring the love of God through our action, through our smile, through our touch, through our gentleness, our tolerance and our respect. So we prayed this evening 
For all those who are hurting and who've given up on life, for all women who have been sexually exploited in the workplace, as we've been hearing on Radio 5 Live, where they've, certain companies expect them to wear, is it 24 inch high heels and oh, how appalling. So we pray for a return to values and respect and that no one should put another one down. So we pray for women to be treated fairly and respectfully and not to be exploited as a piece of meat on a conveyor belt. They are a child of God. So let us now bring all of this together as we hold the whole world in the palm of our hands and we bring all the needs of all God's children, of all faiths and colours and backgrounds to the light. And we say thank you for touching each one of us and for empowering us to let the rays of your love back into our hearts. Amen. So let us now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to Jane and Liam and all here their daily bread. Forgive each one of us our misdemeanors, our impatience, our intolerance. The times when we've put ourselves down as being unworthy, for the times when we allowed others intimidate us and take away your peace. We forgive them and ourselves. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the forces of negativity, despair and evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I want to pray this beautiful little prayer that I picked up. Well, they sing it actually at the Unitarian Chapel in Kendall. Spirit of life, come unto me. Sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion. Blow in the wind, rise in the sea. Move in the hand giving life and shape of justice. Roots hold me close, wings set me free. Spirit of life, come to me, come to me. Isn't that lovely? And our closing prayer again, a Celtic blessing. May the grace of the love of the stars be yours. May the grace of the love of the winds be ours. May the grace of the love of the waters be ours. In the name of the word of all life. So go in peace, my dear, dear friends, and know that we are all loved. And we call on the Father, Mother, God to touch each one of us now and to fill us with that inner knowing that we are loved. Amen. So namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum, Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of all that is sacred to you reawaken in your heart that you are a child of love, that you are a co-creator of the divine. Amen. Till we meet again, I wish you, dear brother Liam, a good shift this evening. Shift at the passage and to dear Jane I wish you a restful evening and all here keep warm God bless <laughs>